Okay, we're going to tie a model of minnow. Uh, you'll see that I don't stack or, or compress the head hair on the uh, model of minnow anywhere near as much as you often see on a commercially tied fly. And that is because I think they, uh, they fish better, uh, deeper, without all of that hair. And uh, they cause more disturbance going through the water when they have a rough head. Uh, and I want it to uh, move a bunch of water as it comes through. So I've started my thread and wrapped back to the bend and I've got a quill segment here that I'm going to pick up by just wetting my fingertip and touching against it. That's a trick you can use to pick quill segments up off a desk or tabletop. And I've got my two segments uh, now uh, from opposing wing quills and I'm going to try to even these ends up and then trap these uh, pieces in back for the tail. Now the the size of this quill segment is the same size as what I'm going to use for the wing when I place the wing. Uh, and I can get away using the same size for both the tail and the wing because you just use the tips of the feather when you tie this tail in. And if you if you use a smaller quill segment or not as wide a quill segment to tie the tail is, uh, is what you use for the wing. What happens is your tail kind of just disappears. So normally to place this tail or to secure it onto the hook I would use a pinch technique just rotating so I got the turn and look feature of the uh, vise. I can see where I'm tying in. I can see my loop and everything but some people have a problem getting this to pull down and, and seat nicely because the, the back side uh, thread they don't get in the proper place and so I'm going to show you the Langley loop technique here uh, which allows you to keep that backside thread right in place with your middle finger I just wrap the thread over my index finger I use my middle finger to keep the backside thread in place trap the near side with my thumb now I've got the quill and the thread between my thumb and middle finger I use my scissors to get my index finger out of the loop, loosen the pinch between my th thumb and middle finger, and allow the weight of the bobbin to bring this loop down to here. Get my scissors out of there and grab my bobbin, and now I can pinch fairly tightly with my thumb and middle finger and pull straight down and seat this right on top. And it will be right where I want it because I, uh, I did indeed see that my rear the thread on the back side was evenly placed with the thread on the near side whoops I pulled it out a little bit I'll straighten that out and trap the rest of this one or two more wraps just to make sure I got it and then move forward pinching each time I come down so that I can keep this material right on top of the hook and I'll get up here to the front trim those <coughs> end fibers off <coughs> excuse me and then continue wrapping over the underbody to smooth it up I'll wrap all the way to the rear to the tail and then wrap back up to where the body material ends having done that I'm going to tie my tinsel in for the uh, tinsel body and uh, I'm going to tie this tinsel in with the gold out. I'm not going to fold it over like I normally do. I'll just do a couple wraps here, four or five actually, to hold that in place, bring my bobbin cradle up and hang my bobbin over the cradle. Turn that so that I can easily grab it. Pull a little bit on here to get this so that it lays nicely and then uh, I'll wrap all the way to the tail and stopping here at the tail I'll turn around and wrap all the way back up. Now when I get back up to the end uh, I'll just take my thread out of the cradle here and unwrap a couple of wraps And then come underneath my tinsel, wrap over the top of it, trapping that material.
come in here and cut both those tag ends off. And we got the tail and uh, body material on the hook and it's time for the under wing which is squirrel tail. And I'm going to wrap back up onto the body, uh, back up to where it's nice and flat to get past the taper that you can see that goes towards the eye. If I tied in in that tapered area, the, the under wing would stick up too high. So I've wrapped back up onto the flat part. I'll size my squirrel tail uh, as far as length. And I'm not so worried about the uh, where the thread comes down here, so I'll just use a regular pinch technique. I don't need to use the Langley loop to set this material. A couple of wraps to secure it. Looks like it stayed up on top. Let's make a couple more tight wraps and then lift this material and make a couple wraps underneath it. Set it back down and wrap again. This helps lock this uh, squirrel tail in. Squirrel tail is a very notoriously slippery material. It doesn't hurt uh, to actually put a drop of head cement in there uh, to help keep that slippery material in. And having gotten that placed where I want it, I'll flatten it out a little bit with my thumbnail, spread it. This is supposed to be a bulky fly, uh, so you know it's it's to your benefit to spread and and get some uh, uh, bulk to this whole thing. You can see I'm not too worried about the uh, amount of space I leave to to uh, spin the uh, uh, bare shank that I leave to spin the hair on because I will spin the hair on top of the uh, threaded uh, thread body. So I've got that on. I've got to put another quill segment in here for the wing. And I'll bring my segments in put them together the same way I did the tail segments and I'm going to use the Langley loop again you can see I go over the top of my index finger use my middle finger to bring the thread into place on the back side of the hook slide my quill material for the wing in between the loop and bring my thumb in to trap the near side thread and the quill segment in place on top of the hook Take my scissors, use them to release my index finger, and then loosening the pinch between my thumb and middle finger, I let the weight of the bobbin bring my loop down. And now I'll just grab my bobbin and pinch and pull, and I've got a wing right where I want it. Another wrap just to make sure it's secure. And I can take and rotate this to check. Looks good enough to me. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a couple more wraps to make sure it's secure. Stand these quill ends up so it's a little easier to cut them. That one hold out there. Okay, with those trimmed down or uh, trimmed off, I'm going to build a uh, taper here, nice smooth thread taper. Okay, with that done. Uh, going to go ahead and prep my deer body hair. Now, uh, one of the reasons I'm not worried so much about uh, having a bare hook right at this point is this first clump of hair that becomes the collar of the fly, uh, I'm actually not going to let it spin anyway. And as far as placement, uh, so that I, I know or I'm pretty confident that that stuff is going to stay in the right spot when I, when I clinch, uh, cinch down my thread, I'm going to build a thread bump here in the front. You can see as I wrap up and down on this thread bump, I, I develop a taper. 
in a valley between the uh, body material and the thread bump that I just built and I put my thread right in that valley take a clump of deer hair and clean it out uh, you can see uh, there's relatively little fuzz or underfur in this uh, deer body hair it's a nice clean piece uh, that's one sign by the way that it's a uh, a good piece of hair for spinning uh, is that it good spinning hair is relatively clean of that uh, under fur and fuzz. So I have my clump here. I've got it between my uh, thumb, index finger, and middle finger in a triangular hold. Uh, decide the length I want. Some people want it to only come halfway of the hook. Some people like to have it come all the way back. Uh, I like it to be fairly long. Again, you can see I've got it between my thumb, index finger, and middle finger. And holding it in a three-way pinch like that. There we go, grabbing it like that. Allows you to slide this over the eye of the hook. You can see the three-way pinch. I've got it in, and I'm trying to get the eye right in the center of that clump. So I slide these tips back, wiggle it around working it in until I get it back to the length that I want then grab it with my left hand I'm gonna bring the bobbin up so you can see it here and I'm gonna spin the bobbin so that when the thread when I wrap a loose thread up around this hair the thread will push back against the my thumb and forefinger or push back towards the bend of the hook away from the eye and I want this loop to stay back there and so that's that's the purpose of spinning you can see how the thread comes back against my thumb uh, naturally because of the spinning I did I'll make two wraps around this and then holding the hair fairly tightly I'm gonna cinch this down and it'll flare the hair as you're seeing but I don't let it spin I've, I've already accomplished getting it 360 degrees around the hook by sliding it over the eye in that triangular hold or grip like I did. Cinch that down a little more securely and wrap through the hair to get in front of it. You can see it did indeed cover the hook nicely. I do have a full 360 degree coverage. And I'm going to take advantage of the uh, fact that there's not a lot of hair in the way and it's pretty easy to trim uh, these butt ends without a bunch of other hair in the way. So I, I just rotate and trim. So I've got these cut down to about the size that the final head is going to be. Push those pieces back, stand them up. And with that secure, I'm going to go ahead and tie a whip finish knot. That way, if while I'm spinning the rest of this head, if I uh, break my thread, I don't have to worry about my collar coming off. You can see the size clump I have, and I'm kind of sizing this clump uh, so that it's at least the height of the head. And I'm going to cut all of the tips off from this. Uh, it makes it a lot easier trimming later. And if you can, uh, if you can learn to handle a short clump like this and spin it, it's much to your advantage uh, when it comes to the trimming stage. I'll cut it off even a little shorter. I've got more length than I need. And I'll come and stroke that back and make two wraps around this clump of hair. Pulling the thread up between my thumb and forefinger. One wrap and pull it a little bit tight. Then make the second wrap. Cinch it down a little, and this third wrap will pull that all the way around despite the fact that there's some uh, thread and body material underneath 
the hair it will certainly spin as you can see Didn't quite go all the way but a wrap and unwrap uh, will take care of that for me I think and I wiggle wrap my thread forward so that it's in front of the uh, clump I just spun on and as you can tell it's it isn't very dense get that to spin a little more it isn't very dense and I don't want it to be very dense uh, again I think kind of a rough finished head uh, without a lot of hair sinks better and moves more water than a smooth head does so I'll stand these pieces up a dual whip finish knot cut that thread off and all I've got left to do is trim this head stand all these fibers up I don't have any uh, uh, tips on there except the tips that are my collar that I want to preserve so uh, and not having great long lengths like uh, I used to have when I spun hair I, I used to not trim it in length at all and uh, I found that trimming it like this and spinning the short lengths on just makes trimming much much easier as you can see it doesn't take long here to trim these up squeeze that all to the back and there you have it there's a muddler tied using rotary fly tying techniques